Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be going through a battery disassembly for a 2018 Nissan LEAF. This battery pack is the 40 kilowatt hour pack. Each individual module has approximately 60% higher energy density than the previous version, the Lizard pack. And I was lucky enough to score one of these from a salvage yard for a pretty decent price. Uh, they said it was out of a Nissan test vehicle from the battery plant down in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It was a little bit sketchy because they didn't have pictures of this individual battery pack. And if you look on the left of the pack, there's actually a hole where the vent would be that was open to the inside of the battery. And there's some damage on the right side of the pack, which they didn't tell me about. And I'm just finishing up cutting the gasket from around the edge of the battery. This is best done with an air hammer with a chisel attachment that's been sharpened to cut through the gasket. Thanks to Jay Summit of Summit.com who suggested that. It worked out really well, although my tiny little compressor had a hard time keeping up with the, the CFM requirements for the air hammer. But it is worth it for the 15 bucks you spend. So it looks like one of the units is very slightly damaged. Uh, two of the units are touched. The other ones show tiny, tiny specks. I'll probably take this unit and split it in half because I was going to split one in half anyway. So if it looks like the cells aren't really damaged when I open it, then, uh, then I'll go ahead and use that one. Um, it's kind of unfortunate because, you know, they said that it was out of a test. I mean, I, I guess it, it wasn't a warranty or whatever, but yeah, so here we have a Nissan Leaf battery. So if you're going to disassemble one of these, keep in mind that everything that's labeled orange is high voltage and the full pack is 400 volts, so it can very easily zap you and potentially kill you. If you go ahead and take out the service disconnect, which is that white plug in the center, before you split the case open, that splits it into two 200 volt packs. So still, definitely still very dangerous, um, but better than 400 volts. So most of the time when I'm working on any of the orange covers, I have uh, 500 volt insulated gloves and then leather coverings over those gloves. It's a bit of a bear to do this disassembly. The whole thing actually took about 11 hours because I didn't have an engine hoist or any tools for really moving really heavy stuff. This whole battery pack, when it's in its fully assembled form, is somewhere around 600 pounds. So if you're having it delivered somewhere where you don't have a power jack to continue moving it around, make sure you put it somewhere that's convenient to work from all sides of the battery. I chose to go at it by first disconnecting all the connectors and the BMS wiring. So you probably saw that earlier if you paid attention. There's a black low voltage harness and then there's another harness with all the, the purple BMS wires that goes to the BMS on the right side of the screen that's now been removed. If you don't have any sort of engine crane or a second person to help you lift these batteries out, you have to get a little bit creative with leverage. Here I've gone ahead and levered up the, the stack um, using the frame and I'll talk about it in a second. But that's so that I can start to disassemble the terminal covers and then hopefully remove each module individually. I say hopefully, but I did. It, it worked. The Phillips head screws are on there surprisingly tight, so I actually used an impact wrench. All that flashing is not electricity flashing around. It's the light on the end of my impact. It worked really well. So I just wanted to point out, well, first of all, it's 19 degrees outside, so unfortunately I'm burning some fossil fuels to stay warm for my electric vehicle project. But I wanted to point out how I am going to get these batteries out without using an engine hoist, at least the front ones. I will get one and borrow one and use one for the rear, but um, what I did was I actually used the bar over there from the middle of the pack, and I levered up this tab here on the edge of the frame and then I slid this little piece of wood underneath the bottom plates so that it would lift the whole thing up enough so that I could actually take the um, 10 millimeter nuts off of the terminal covers and then hopefully I'll be able to slide these guys out once I take the top plate off 
and then that'll cut out a lot of weight and then I can probably take out the top two of these and then just be left with two modules in the bottom plates or actually even just two modules in all the, the covers. So that actually ended up working just about exactly how I said. Once you get those terminal covers off, it's a matter of unbolting the, the end plates on the batteries and then removing the modules individually. And once you get one stack out, the other stack comes out way quicker because you don't have the other batteries in the way. So here I'm getting ready to take out the back stack. This back stack is the heaviest part of the battery and it's pretty difficult to disassemble uh, the modules from each other. So you kind of have to take it out as one big piece. So I went ahead and I undid all but two of the bolts that hold that stack in there. And then I'm going to roll it over onto the pack on a piece of wood. And then I'll go ahead and take out the last two bolts and lift off the cover, like you'll see here. So once you lift off this cover, and uh, an ATV jack helps in here, you just roll it out and there you go, you've disassembled the whole pack. Now you have 40 kilowatt hours of batteries to use in whatever you need. For me, it's my motorcycle. I hope you enjoyed. Catch you next time.